Now, I'm going to start this video off by asking a question. Do we really need good explanations in Star Wars for how the Force works, or is it better shrouded in mystery? And I ask that because something I thought this new sequel trilogy would do is give us at least a somewhat better understanding as to how the Force works. In fact, before The Last Jedi came out, I basically predicted there would be a big reveal about the nature of the Force. To me, it made sense for Disney and Lucasfilm to in a sense, streamline or set some general boundaries or rules on how the Force was going to work going forward, almost like creating a standard for future movies, or those creating the movies. And I'm certainly not saying I thought they'd explain it all, but I actually thought we might get some vague guidelines that, again, would be the basis for Disney's version of Star Wars going forward. However, we got nothing like that. In fact, when you really think about it, I dare say our understanding of the Force, for better or worse, has taken a pretty big step backwards after the first two movies of the sequel trilogy. Why do I say that? Well, back in the days of just the original trilogy, I thought that the Force was a completely neutral and benign energy field that just existed and could be felt and manipulated by certain individuals, those Force-sensitive, of course. I thought that the dark side of the Force was little more than a manifestation of the intent of someone who used it for the wrong reasons, if you will. And this is more or less how George Lucas always explained it, that good guys use the Force for selfless reasons and the bad guys for selfish ones. And the reason why the dark side was easier and felt stronger, though it actually wasn't, was because, as Yoda basically says in The Empire Strikes Back, it didn't require self-control and discipline like mastering the light side does. In other words, it's easier to take than it is to give. Now, the prequels altered that understanding of the Force slightly, because for the first time we heard about the will of the Force, and learned that perhaps it could spontaneously create life to serve its own purpose. And I'm of course talking about Anakin, who may or may not have been created by the Force to fulfill a prophecy to balance the Force. However, we never have that 100% confirmed, and in Episode 3, George Lucas brilliantly created doubt in our minds about the origin of Anakin when he had Palpatine talk about Darth Plagueis the Wise who could create life. And I've always thought it more fitting and ironic if Plagueis did create Anakin and not the Force, and that the Sith were actually the ones who would create that which would ultimately destroy them. Another reason why I like the idea of Plagueis creating Anakin is it would mean the Force does not take an active or direct role in the lives of living beings, or in other words, it does not have some type of conscious agenda or is somehow innately aware of what's going on in the galaxy and seeks to make changes in said galaxy that benefit it. Yes, the Jedi speak of heeding the will of the Force, and Qui-Gon even tells Anakin that if he quiets his mind, he can hear that will spoken to him through the Medichlorians but I've always thought that will was little more than a natural desire to be in a balanced state of existence, not unlike how our own planet Earth here has developed its own natural balance that it just inherently seeks to be in, not because it's aware somehow, but because an order has developed over the ages that just works for it, if you will. Now, the first way the sequel trilogy seems to be changing all this is by stating that the Force can lay dormant and awaken in individuals, such as Rey, and not only that, but apparently control their actions in a way far greater than I dare say Obi-Wan was implying when he told Luke that the Force could partially control your actions while teaching him in A New Hope. Because I've always thought that to mean, like we see mainly with young Anakin pod racing, you could see things a few moments before they happen and respond to them and appear to have amazing reflexes. Not that the Force could actually help you actively use it and perform either learned skills or how to fight with a lightsaber. However, Rey has been shown having a mastery of the Force that can only be explained by the Force itself essentially completely controlling her and working through her to do more than just maintain a natural order it inherently seeks to be in, but by actually protecting her and even trying to destroy evil when it aided her greatly in her fight against Kylo Ren. I mean, one could rightly ask why we have never before seen a Jedi able to wield the Force in a way that would otherwise be beyond their means when fighting a Sith or why the Force did not actively aid a partially trained Luke Skywalker when he took on Darth Vader in The Empire Strikes Back. I mean, if it came to Rey's aid, why not theirs? And I think the answer to that is, or was, clear. As I basically said before, the Force is not actively aware of the battle of good versus evil. It again simply seeks to be in a certain state and steers itself in that general direction inherently. It is not aware of the fact that there are those, mainly the Sith, and other dark side users that oppose it or purposely seek 
to derail that balance and impose their own will upon it. If it was, I dare say the Force, being the foundation of everything, would not only just start to feel like a god, which it is certainly not, but it would also easily be able to eradicate evil or any dark side user any way it chose to when you consider it is life itself, it is all powerful. And actually the fact that the Force does not work so directly is what makes Star Wars and the struggle of the Jedi vs the Sith interesting in the first place. It's a level playing field. We feel like the Sith can, and they have, win and take control of the galaxy, and maybe in a way that the light side can never recover from. Yes, again, it prefers and seeks balance, but it doesn't interfere with living beings to maintain that balance. This is instead what the Jedi do, what the point of their existence is. And as soon as the Force begins to pick sides, which it seems to be doing in the sequel trilogy, and takes an active role in the battle of good versus evil, Star Wars will begin to lose its appeal to myself and others. Because that fear or belief that the bad guys could achieve a lasting victory will be gone. And I dare say, this is the root of the true problem a lot of people have with the character of Rey. It's not so much the character itself, but the fact that her powers have caused a fundamental change to how the Force works, without any real explanation for it other than darkness rises and light to meet it, which was what Snoke said of her and has been the only real explanation we've been given so far. But the problem with that explanation, for me, again shows the Force is taking an active role in the battle of good versus evil and is aware and conscious of the fact of what evil is, which makes one ask the question, how can evil ever win if the Force itself is against them, which basically means existence itself is against them. Another thing this does is make the Jedi or light side users feel like an immune system response from the Force, like the Force can somehow sense too much dark side, and create a powerful light side user to combat it. And especially after the prequels, this is not at all what I thought the Jedi to be, nor is it how George Lucas ever described them, because they don't exist merely to combat evil or the dark side, they exist solely to maintain balance. And yes, sometimes that requires battling those who wield the dark side and cause a grave imbalance within the Force by using it for their own will and desires. Because a true Jedi learns to set all their own wants and desires aside and to quiet their mind to be in tune with the Force itself, to see and understand what needs to be done to maintain the balance, not because they are actively being directed by the Force, but because they have become one with it and simply understand what needs to be done. Rey, however, has learned none of this and instead feels like a puppet on strings controlled by the Force. We feel like she can't fail because, well, she can't. She has this new Force God entity on her side that aids her at every turn. And again, I'm not saying I hate the character of Rey. She's just, in my opinion, being poorly written by people who are missing some of the most fundamental aspects of Star Wars. Because we really do have to remember what Yoda said. The dark side was the quick and easy path, and after three days of having the Force awoken in her, Rey is one of the most powerful Jedi or Force users we've ever seen. If anyone has ever been on the quick and easy path, it's her. And yet we have no real fear of her falling to the dark side, even though she's been given all this power with no training to begin to understand how dangerous it can be. But that's not even the real problem, or even a problem at all, because the Force itself seems to be guiding her and giving her the wisdom to use it and to use it for the right reasons. And this really does destroy the inner battle we've seen before and come to love about Star Wars, how those who are strong with the Force must come to terms with it and grapple with the awesome responsibility that wielding the Force is, a power that can freely be used for selfless or selfish reasons. And this was a battle that Anakin Skywalker tragically lost in the prequels, and one that Luke triumphantly won in the original trilogy, but one that Rey doesn't even seem to have to wage here in the sequels. Well, that's all I've got for you this time. Now it's your turn to tell me what you think. Do you think this new trilogy is ruining our understanding of the Force, or am I way off here? Also, just how much do you think we should eventually learn about the Force? No more than we already do? A little more than we already do? Or should it all eventually be explained in time? Let me know in the comments below what you think, and let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.